Hello, I'm Steve with Touch the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. Um, I'm going to share with you today some scriptures that I got this morning in prayer. I know I need to make sure I get this out to you guys as soon as I can yesterday. Um, but anyhow, <clears throat> this morning was Matthew 1 5, John 1 5, Luke 1 5. Romans 1 5, Acts 1 5, and Revelation 1 5. Some of them I get, some of them I still kind of got to study, um, but I'm just doing this out of obedience right now, so this is kind of the direction the Lord's taking me, so it's kind of like I'm just getting him out there. So, you know, if anybody has any insight, Revelation, uh, I'm in, because the Word of God is just awesome. So, anyhow, here we go. Bear with me while I kind of go through these, so. so Solomon begot Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed, Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse then six, and Jesse begot David the king. Okay, let's go to John. That's kind of the lineage of David. So let's go to John. Stay with my slowness here, guys. Guess I should have marked these to make it a little bit easier. Uh, I'm sorry, Mark too is in there. Then all of the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Okay, let's go to one five for whatever reason. I'm just kind of just a delivery guy today. So there was in the day of the Lord, in the day of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was the daughter of Aaron, and he was named and her name was Elizabeth. Now it might seem like I'm all over the map, but not really. There's a direction the Lord's taking this purpose and I'm just kind of kind of flow with it. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Okay, then that's John. Let's go to Acts. I mean Romans. Yeah, Acts. Acts 1 and 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Romans. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations, for his name, among whom ye also are called of Jesus Christ. And now let's go to Revelation. And who was and who is to come from the seven spirits who are before his throne? I'm sorry, that's four. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. That's really a good one. Um, they're all good. Um, kind of seemingly a little different direction, but not really. They all tie together. Just a lot to chew on. Um, it's just kind of where the Lord has me right now, guys. It's just kind of diving into his word. Because really... 
This is on one of my other videos, but one day, this is what I do, okay? Not me, but really, the Lord didn't wake me up at 3, 4, 5 in the morning, early in the morning. So I'll get up and pray, drink my coffee, sometimes out of my favorite, favorite cup, favorite scripture, Proverbs 3, 4, 5, and 6, trusting in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. This gets us in a lot of trouble. This keeps us clean, right with Him. So, but anyhow, I'll get up and pray. Ask the Lord what He wants me to do, kind of get direction, guidance. Then I'll sit down and read my word. Sometimes He'll tell me to read my word first. So I'll have something to pray about. Sometimes He won't. Sometimes He'll start giving me scriptures. Sometimes I'll be in dreams when I'm first waking up, kind of, and sometimes they won't. Um, but when I get out my Bible, I sit here at this kitchen table and I start praying over the word because I'm, I'm like, God, let this enter into my heart. Let it cleanse me, purify me. Let it really stick. Go deep. And I was praying one day and the Lord said, pray over it just like you do your meals because I'm the bread of life. So I was like, okay, God, I'll start praying over it, you know, because it is food. It's food for our soul, guys. It's food for our, our minds, our hearts. It's just purifying, cleansing. And then, you know, so it's kind of a combination. That's one of the other messages that I've got out there is who is your source? God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, and the Word. So, you know, that's where I want to hear people from from the spirit i'm gonna pro you know some people got stuff to say and i may or may not be listening you know it's not to be rude i'm not gonna try to be rude or mean or evil or just anything but if it's not coming from those sources I'm probably you know i'm not buying i'm not listening i'm not really paying it, a lot of attention to it and might put a lot of brain cells and effort into it and that's what I'm telling you guys, too. Get it for yourself. Because it's a personal relationship with him. But anyhow. Um, and the other piece of this, I guess, would be that, you know, we got to kind of get over ourselves, especially people in the ministry, because we kind of discount others. You know, are there other walks with God? Like, we're it. You know, even Elijah, powerful prophet, crying and complaining in the cave. I was like, I got 7,000 that never bowed a knee. I mean, there's, you know, there's others out there, guys. So, and you guys are some of it. I mean, you could be anything from the doorkeeper at the church to the, the, the greeter to the whatever level you seem to be at. It's not even about levels. It's just about What's your purpose with God? You can be a stay-at-home mom and be in the perfect will of God. You can be not even attending church someplace and that be where God has you. You know, I'm all I'm all for it. We need to go. We need to be part of the body. We need to connect. But there may be a season where you're seemingly not connected. Um, yesterday my wife and I were listening about a really good message about crushing and kind of dying out and <clears throat> went along the lines of the you know, the photographs, the image, and how old, old, old time, old school, now it's, you know, technology's way past this, but used to be a dark room, and your, the, the photos had to be put into chemical process, and then put on the negatives, but if the door was open and light exposed it, that it was destroyed, the photos were destroyed. So, we're the light of the world. What it says in here, and that was one of the scriptures I just wrote, the darkness did not comprehend it. Our light just needs to be His glory, and not ours, and not man-made, and not gloating and self-motivating, and there's just so much of that stuff going on, guys. I mean, it's in, being ingrained in us from a little child. You know, we're, Americans kind of got an attitude. I'm sorry, and I'm an American too, but it's kind of like if we go to another country, we expect to be treated differently or better. 
better than. So that's kind of crept into our mentality and our, what about the rest of the world? What about the rest of his children? What about, you know, people from, may live in the backwoods of some podunk country that we don't even ever hear about or some city or some little town or whatever, you know? Instead, we're kind of running to the, to the glamorous, glitzy, who's got the bigger gathering and band and stuff, and church or just labels on stuff that's not even him. That's one of the other things he told me, which I'm going to put out a message one day, but he said a lot of his people are building serfs, turfs, and kingdoms that aren't of, aren't of me. Serfs is a whole separate class of people, lower than, less than, poor, ignorant, whatever, just their lives don't matter. Turfs are like, look at my church, look what I'm doing for God, look at what I built, did, do, blah, blah, blah. Really? Honestly? We haven't done anything for God. It's just the obedience. It's just your vessel. It's just where you're at. Yeah, we're all kings and royal priests and awesome. God, and if we accept Jesus in our heart, he lives in us and it's just his glory and it's just, there's just so much awesomeness to that. But we also have to humble ourselves like Second Chronicles of my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. We also have to just do like Jesus that, didn't think it was robbery to be equal with God, but the rest of it is he took on the form of a servant, even unto death. So what's he showing you, you know? I mean, I'm working on it. I've got a little bit of an attitude in some areas, but I'm trying to just do what he wants me to do and not look around it at others or people or things and just kind of get it out there. I've just got to be who I am. And so do you. It may look a little different. That's kind of what I'm saying. You know, a lot of the people in the ministry are like, you know, formulas in certain ways. And we all can kind of get like that. Because that's just the humanality of us. But Jesus is like breaking out of the box. That's why a lot of his parables were parables, you know? He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say in the church. It's time for us to just get it for ourselves, and it's an individual walk. And it may not look like mine. That doesn't mean it's not God. We can't judge other people on based upon stuff that we think or what we've built and manifested and I gotta step back and really look at it in the spirit. Colossians, that's what he told me about Colossians 3.16, but look at it, it's how we entreat each other. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, the body of Christ. So anyhow, you know, there's kind of several different veins in this and that's just how I am, but it's not to be all scattered and the shotgun approach or any of that. It's just when I start getting in this mode, I just kind of go with it. So, but that's just me. But it's not about me this morning. It's about you and your walk with God and your personal relationship. One of the things my wife and I minister down at a homeless shelter, and one of the things I tell them is like, God saying through Jesus, Jesus is saying, come on, come on, come on. Come out from amongst them. You're in the world, but not of the world. It's a journey, guys. If all you got is Jesus, if that's all you can say, God, he wants you right where you're at. So, as he moves in, he'll move stuff out. Purge you, clean you, wash you. 
maybe a process and maybe 20 years. That's what the message was yesterday about King David and how he's anointed a king, but it took 20 years for him to get there. Process. Might take, you know, five minutes. He's, you know, part of the message was, you know, this is an instant society. And a lot of the young people are like pictures and Instagram and you post it and it's suddenly it's worldwide. It's like, God's not instant oatmeal, guys. It's pretty much what the gist of a lot of it was. It's a process. And we have to go through the process. We can't deviate from it. We can't. Some of us have more junk than others that we have to get rid of. Some of us are already, you know, good ways there. I don't know. But God has a purpose for all of us, those that are listening. It may just be few. Apparently it's you this morning. Um, so anyhow, just kind of, that's the main theme really that I want to portray is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. God, the Holy Ghost, and your, even your personal relationship with this word. Because it is living. If we let it. So. Trust in that. Those things. Not even what I'm saying. I mean that's all. I mean I'm going to get 90. 99% of it right. A lot of it. Most of it. Hopefully all of it. But I may. Not quite get there. So. Put that in the. In the mix. Filter it through. Just take it to God. Take it to Jesus. Take it to the Holy Spirit. Lead, guide, and direct me in all truths. Filter it through the Word. So, kind of, kind of leave you with that. Um, if you want to email me, Steve Youngstrom at yahoo.com. You can put comments on here. Please do that. Kind of help me sort through these these words for this morning. Um, not really like. Just, just, I'd li love to hear from you guys. Uh, so anyhow, God bless y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry to be a little bit long, long this morning. Uh, I try really hard not to be, but there's just so much that God's doing and wanting to share. And, you know, we all have, we all are his glory and we all have a story. So, and where his voice read Psalms 29, the voice of the Lord is as thunder, but read all of it. But. We're his voice, guys, on this earth, in the spirit, when we're in the spirit. We're in the flesh, we're our own voice, opinionated and easily offended and pick up junk and, you know, make all these kind of weird, goofy choices. Move into the spirit, guys. Move into this. You know which side my heart's on. Pretty lame, huh? But anyhow, move into your heart and not into this. Don't trust in this anymore, guys. I get it. I understand. You know, you got kids in college or car payments or jobs or, you know, the oil in your car needs changing. You need tires. I mean, there's just things in the natural kind of vying for your attention, you know, basic to comp complicated, you know. I understand that. So does God. But Carve out that time. Let that be first. And then all the other stuff will follow. Start your day out, your morning, your night. End your night with seeking him, praying with him, communicating with him, talking with him. What do you want me to do, God? Where are you showing me? Where are we going? What's going on? Bring all, all this stuff to him. and Watch him move. And even if he doesn't, it may just be part of a process. It may be a reason why he's dying you out in that area. Because we all have, you know, a uniqueness and a difference and a purpose and a calling. And it's part of his orchestrated plan. So, anyhow, God bless y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, please watch some of my other videos. Share them with others. Uh, likes, dislikes. 
God bless you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.